Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. I am talking in a softer voice today because Micah is taking a nap, so I don't want to wake him up. Um, but it has been seven months since my last video, so it's been a long time since I've posted. I'm so glad to be back. Obviously, from the title, I will be sharing with you guys my birth story, and so we are going to dive in. <laughs> follow me on Instagram, you will know that I have a seven week old baby boy whose name is Micah and we are over the moon. We are so happy he is finally here with us. He is precious. I freaking love him. Maybe later in the video, um, you guys will be able to meet him. Okay, so I went in at 39 weeks and I was 80% effaced and four centimeters dilated. Um, and my midwife was only going to be on call that weekend because I had Micah at a hospital with a midwife, like a low intervention. And so that, let's see, Micah was born the 11th of July. And so on the 10th, I can't remember if it was Friday or Saturday, um... I believe it was Saturday. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I think. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, so the night before I had Micah, I had some hot wings just to see, like, if it would help me with inducing labor because I really wanted my midwife to deliver Micah. And so I tried the hot wings. And I'm like, yeah, nothing's going to happen. Like, I joked around. Um, with Kate's cousin at three o'clock in the morning my water broke and I always said I wasn't going to be that person that calls and says hey I think my water broke but I was that person and I called the hospital and I was like hey I think my water broke I'm not sure and they're like if you think it did come on in because in my head I had planned that I was going to try to labor at home as much as possible and then go into the hospital but it turned out my water broke so i had to go in so obviously with covid kate wasn't able to go into the emergency room um with me just because like that's where i had to check in i was there in there for probably an hour and a half two hours i didn't get into a room till six o'clock that morning and when i was in the er they did the covid test and um, they asked me if I was having contractions, but it was so early. I wasn't having any contractions. I mean, I know some people have contractions early. Some have contractions for a couple of days. I wasn't feeling any contractions. So um, the doctor that was there was like, hey, we can give you something to have you start feeling contractions. But at the same time, like we can wait it out. But if you don't have contractions after a certain amount of time, like we're gonna have to uh, give you something for to start your contractions. So I said, no, I don't wanna be given anything. I'm gonna um, try to walk and do different like yoga positions and just try to stay more like active, I guess, so that I can get the contractions going. About six, Six o'clock we got into a room I still wasn't feeling any contractions um, and I started walking around and I like took a nap for a little bit well um, my midwife comes in I still don't have contractions she told me the same thing so I was like oh my goodness like I hope I start feeling some contractions you know eventually soon whatever so that I can stay at the low intervention suite because once I get moved then they move me to a normal room um she wouldn't de be delivering my gut have a regular doctor um so I wanted to stick to my plan as much as possible and so by nine o'clock I believe that morning I started having contractions they were like tolerable 
for the most part, like I did have to breathe through some of them. So I started having contractions and they started getting like stronger and stronger, obviously as the time went on. I don't remember times. I just remember that at as they were getting stronger, I was trying to do different positions on the bed. Um, I did get in the tub, helped with my um, like contractions. After the tub, I laid down for a little bit. I think I took like a 15 minute nap and then I got back up and um, I got, they have the, the birthing ball or bouncy ball, whatever you want to call it. I don't know what the actual term is, but I sat on that and I remember I was starting to get like so uncomfortable and in my head I was like I don't know if I can do this I remember like Cade was sitting like in the in a chair and I just remember looking at him and I started crying and I was like I don't know if I can do this and he like came over because I was like on the bedside like here's a bed I'm right here on the bouncy ball thing and I'm like linked over and I'm pretty I don't know if I like fell asleep or if I felt like I passed out or something I don't know because this is like once I start once that point hit I started like going in and out of it I guess um and at this point I was already six centimeters dilated so I remember <laughs> I think he's waking up Anyways, so at this point, I believe I was six centimeters. So I remember like falling asleep or passing out. I don't know what happened. And I was still on the bouncing ball, leaned over against the bed. And I hear an, the nurse come in and she's on the computer. And I guess she got alerted or something because I had a monitor again, um, around my belly. So I guess a monitor was going off or something because she came in and all I remember her was saying like, hey, can we get an ultrasound in here? And she's like, do you, like, we need to get you in the bed. So she gets me in the bed and I guess the heart rate monitor, I don't know, something goes back up in the levels and she canceled like the ultrasound. I was eight centimeters dilated and 90% e-phased. So by this point, in my whole delivery, I am ready to have Micah. I am ready to just get him out. I am like just hurting. I want him out. I kept telling my midwife, like, I want him out like now, like now. I have no idea what time it is because we had the blinds down. I don't, I'm just tired. So, um, in order, I was 90% e-phased, so in order to get 100% e-phased, they had me lay on my right side because that's where I needed to like completely e-phase, I guess. What helped the most with me dilating and um, progressing, I guess, is leaning on the bed on all fours. Um, so having like my, my hands down and my legs nailed that's what helped me progress and so every time a contraction came i felt like pushing and i felt like pushing obviously this is my first kid so like i had no idea um one what this experience was going to be like but two also that every time i felt like pushing they had they would have to check because i can't like they didn't want me to push and me not be completely phased or not completely dilated. They like would wait for a couple of minutes and I'm like, no, like I feel like I have to push. So they would have to like check to see if I had dilated or if my phasement has changed any in between contractions. And that was the hardest thing because a contraction would come and it was like, hurry up and check. And then a contraction would come. So, um, that hurt. By now, Micah, I'm ready to have Micah. Um, I started off with uh, pushing on all fours. Um, I pushed for probably an hour and a half. Um, 
I started on all fours, leaned forward, and then um, I ended up on my back. But the thing with Micah is, is I would push and he was like right there. And I started getting leg cramps while I was pushing. So my, <laughs> I wasn't by this point, like, there was just so much going on that I wanted the leg cramps to stop so that I could focus on pushing. But I was so focused on my leg cramps that I would stop pushing. So a contraction would come, I was ready to push, and I would push and a leg cramp would happen. So there was three times where Micah, like they could see him, like see his head. And then it was like, he was back in because I'd get a leg cramp. So my midwife was trying to have me focus on just pushing and just push through the, the, the cramping. And I couldn't like the cramping was just like, like I had to move. Like my hip was just like, I need to like adjust or something. Finally, after what seemed like forever, um, I guess Micah was like, his head was like starting, like it was coming out. And like, at this point, like I'm not dealing with, um, my, hip cramps, leg cramps anymore. So at this point, my wife, midwife is looking at me and just saying like, okay, like when we get to a certain part, like I'm gonna need you to breathe like slowly and all this. And obviously like, I'm just trying to get this kid out by this point. Like I just remember saying, okay, okay, okay. But um, I did not wait for her to tell me like, hey, breathe slowly. Finally, she told me this, the breathing part will, it was time to push again. And I pushed and Micah comes out and it was just like the most beautiful thing. Sorry. I don't know. It's just something you cannot explain. Like moms had explained to me, um, the feeling that you get when you see your kid and all the pain, all the pushing, everything that you had went through, like you're gonna just like, it's gone. And honestly, that's the way it was. Like Micah came out, I just like, I heard him cry. He was just like the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen, obviously, cause I think that cause he's my kid. And so, yeah, it was, it was a long, I felt like a long day for sure. But I feel like a lot of you moms can relate. Like just when you see your child, it's just a whole nother feeling. And so I'm so thankful to finally have Micah here. So that is my delivery birth story. Um, he's still sleeping. So I guess you guys won't get to see him this video, but I do post pictures and videos of him on my Instagram if you'd like to check those out. So in order to see more videos, make sure you subscribe, um, hit the notification bell, and um, we are back. Anyways, thank you guys, and we will see you guys next time. Bye.